All right. Well, it is the world famous K Rock. I'm Megan Holiday, and I'm here with my dudes. We got John and Zach, a Portugal the man. What's up? Hey, good to see you. <laughs> I'm so happy to see you guys. I actually just recently uh, saw you at the Beach Life Music Festival last year. Um, was that like one of your first shows back yeah. playing? And, and how did it feel to be back on stage again? Weird. <laughs> so funny it. coming from Portland. Like Portland has been so like hardcore about everything. And then we leave this little bubble that we're in and we end up anywhere else. And it's like, did it happen different here? Yeah. Like, did everything happen different? People can see each other. Yeah. Um, especially in uh, you know, in Orange County too, because it's like you'll go from LA to Orange County and it's like two different places oh, yeah. you know what i mean so anywhere you go it's just like everybody's doing things differently here but it was so it was so awesome to get to finally like see you guys after all this time and uh i'm sure your fans are really excited because your brand new single what me worry just uh dropped today um so i listened through the song a few times and the same thing that kept popping into my head was you know, the really iconic meme of the dog that's like sitting in the burning house and he's like, this is Perfect. fine. You know, like, would that that's be amazing? An- that's exactly what we had in mind when we wrote this. <laughs> that's weird. It's the first time anybody said that. Are you serious? Yeah. Really? Yeah. You're so smart. Oh yeah, my God. That- no. Well, you know what it is? I'm just, I feel this connection with you guys. I feel this like affinity, like we're Beatles lovers. Like I got Beatles shit everywhere. Like, you know, just very influenced from oldies music and Motown and all that stuff. And I just, I love you guys. Like, I love your vibe and I love your music. So talk a little bit about where this song kind of started from and kind of what it means. Yeah. It's uh well, it's, it started off. We, <clears throat> we wrote this with Ryan Tedder and he's a, super handsome, super talented dude in a really, really nice house. We totally did not belong, but uh, yeah, we were, we were just having fun. And, and a lot of this stuff kind of came up just with all the misinformation and just like the divisiveness of everything right now. And just how everything is so serious and heavy that at some point you just kind of throw up your hands. Exactly. It's that, it's that meme that everything's fine. And it's just kind of, yeah, finding finding beauty in the chaos and just being okay with yourself in whatever situation that you're in. And uh, yeah, it was it was a lot about worry and just anxiety that's been all this new anxiety. And then we have to we're starting to go back to like our old lives, and there's all that anxiety that we kind of forgot about. And uh, yeah, just writing about that, and try, we're we're just doing therapy with music, trying to make <laughs> it better. I think. And uh, and yeah, so, let me worry. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people are going to connect to this song because it really is just kind of about like, no matter what, every single day, there's going to be those anxieties, like knocking at your door, worries going on in your mind. But we have to find a way to sort of put one foot in front of the other and, you know, figure out this thing called life, I guess. Carry on, my wayward son. (laughs) John, is there anything... um, like, cause you know, I know that a pastime, you know, with your dad was that like you would drive around and listen to oldies music and stuff. So when I was, I was just like, kind of like listening to the instrumentals and stuff. And there's so much cool stuff that's going on in this song. Um, would you say that any of it, it, you know, kind of comes from stuff that you were listening to a lot when you were a kid or. Oh, it's, it's totally that. I mean, everything that we do anymore, it just, it's calling back to that. Like the reason I play music is it, it's Dick Dale. There's like surf guitar in it and it's agent orange. And it's, it's all the punk that we grew up, grew up on. It, it was actually, it was just so much fun hanging with somebody like Tedder, who is like, we, we come from the same background. Like he's an alternative. Kid. Like he's like a punk kid. And we were talking about how like music used to be so subversive. And I mean, that is mad magazine to to the t like that that's what this is about is music used to be i want to hold your hand the the beatles kind of nudging at things that were going on out there but in a really fun way i mean i just wanted to go out and have fun again that that's the thing that i miss more than anything is like live instruments 
I was kind of listening to radio a, a little bit, like kind of like not um, just alternative music, but kind of across the board. And there, it's also sample heavy. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I wanted to hear like a live drummer, like a ripping drum track on on our first single. You know, and man, it's it's a shredding track. Sure. It really is. Like, even in the very beginning, it kind of, like, reminds me of Metallica a little bit for some reason. Um, okay. that, <laughs> and, those notes, yeah. the, it's the John Carpenter, like, Halloween-type notes. It's totally. yes. horror movie, yeah. like, yeah. horror movie notes. Absolutely. It is It is all of those things. And I was like, oh, my God, there's so many influences and styles that are just in this one track. So I'm super curious about just the entire album. Um, so you guys worked with Jeff Basker on this album. So he's done like Kanye, Harry Styles, who I love so much, Beyonce. I mean, you know, all these legendary people. So what was it like working with him and what can we kind of expect from this new album coming out? It was yeah. humbling. <laughs> <laughs> that dude is a genius like really when good. you hang with somebody like that like it, not only musical genius but like a true intellectual uh, uh you don't understand half the things he's talking about <laughs> but uh I'm nodding, smiling <laughs> yeah he is just so like his approach to music and i mean just seeing what he did with kanye i mean kanye who's already so experimental and so forward thinking and I mean, brilliant with curating, like you see why he grabbed Jeff, like Jeff is like his approach to chords and it's not really the most intuitive thing for anybody but Jeff Basker. And you hear it across the board and like, he is responsible for pushing Kanye into the into outer space. Like he is the guy that facilitated that and, and made all of that happen. He introduced and Kanye to Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> Someone had to do you should be. <laughs> um, so, you know, like, obviously, and I feel, I, I feel like a lot of people probably ask you this. I mean, you know, feel it still just being such a massive song, you know, that just kind of blew everything into outer space for you guys. But when you go in to write this album, I mean, the thing is, is so much has happened from that time to now. Um, were you able to just kind of go in and just be like, we're just going to do what we've always done for the last, you know, 16, 17 years and just make music that feels good? Yeah, I mean, yeah that- we did initially. Yeah. Initially, yeah. we did. It, it, and then everything changed. I, th- I think this has been the I mean, it's been a pattern for this band is <laughs> things move so fast. And when you write about. I mean, we're not like a, I don't write about relationships. I don't write about like, hey, that was a fun night out or a hookup or whatever it is. Like we're, it's typically talking about social situations and it's it's very like social commentary based, but everything moves so quick. Like everything changes. I mean, in 2016, everything changed. Like the whole world just kind of blew up into this, like stuck on our phones and feeling a new way. And, and that's what inspired something like Feel It Still. The same thing happened, I guess. So we were pretty close to, to done with the album and then the pandemic hit. And it just shifted all of this focus to be like, how do I write again? Like, how do I write when there's no toilet paper, <laughs> when there's no <laughs> strawberries in the grocery store? Like, how do I write about this stuff? And I, I, I think we, we found our, our center on, on all of this. It, again, it just made me really want to get back to our roots as a band and like what inspired me to make music. So when we talk about like oldies and like the Dick Dale influence on uh, What Me Worry and Mad Magazine, these are all the reasons that we play music. I mean, we put out a song with Weird Al during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, if that says anything about where we stand in music. <laughs> Uh, that was so fun. And you put out um, a couple of really fun 90s covers as well um, with the, uh, you know, support acts that you're taking on tour, uh, Cherry Glazer and Sir Chloe. So uh, in choosing the Eels and Len, Steal My Sunshine, uh, were those just kind of tracks that you just felt like, you know, these are songs that are going to make people happy. These are songs that ha- like hit me in that nostalgia factor. How do you go about choosing these Oh, it's all nostalgia. Like it's, 
I, and and great, really great songwriting. Like I really love looking at at things. I mean, you look at Smash Mouth and Stephen Colbert at one point did something with a choir where the choir was singing Smash Mouth, and it's these just the songwriting in the nineties. It's um, it's peak songwriting. Like it's the most competitive era for songwriting production. Just everybody had a song. It didn't matter if you had just one on an album. Like everybody has one song. Like and they are killers. Yeah. And put up next to anything today, it's it's really difficult to compete. You can't really compete with that songwriting. It was yeah. just fun to like go after like man eels. Like what a great band and always consistent and always amazing. And they have this, I mean, that song is just, it's massive for me. It was really fun as well to work with these younger artists that for us, like we look at them and they have like a real nineties vibe and they, you know, there's, there's always, we talk about like the, you know, generally for any generation, the golden age of everything was roughly 30 years ago. So yeah, in the nineties were all about the sixties, you know, eighties, clearly about the fifties, everything got weird and conservative. And so now like the nineties are coming back and it was fun to see like, you know, with Sir Chloe and with, uh, um, with Cherry Glazer, like they totally have a nineties thing, but they don't really know it. Mm -hmm. And so it was really fun kind of getting to show them some of these things and, they, it's funny they're influenced by it and they don't even totally know and they just kill it it's it's awesome oh yeah i mean it, they were perfect fits and totally. the cut like they just turned out so good and i just thought it was really cool that you guys you know before the tour starts kind of just introducing people hey these are the people that we're going to be going out on tour so get here early and come out and see us you know um so you guys are about to start your tour on the 25th you're going to be here in la at the crypto.com arena, uh, previously known as the Staples Center. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that show is going to be on March 27th. Weird. Uh, so I do want to take a second really quick to talk to you guys, um, because you were one of the first bands to really start with your own cryptocurrency, like the, the PTM coin. So something that you're doing right now, uh, or that you did before the single came out was, you know, if you guys pre-save our song, we're going to give you some like PTM coins. So how did you guys know to kind of get in on this ahead of time? And what kinds of things can people redeem? Like what can your fans redeem with the coin? So we've got a, like a discord server set up with a bunch of, we, we pretty much wanted to start kind of a fan club that wasn't crappy there. <laughs> they just sound weird, but we just want to, we, we have a lot of fans that are like hardcore that we you know around before feel it still and that might want to dig a little deeper. So we, yeah, so we created the coin because John's always kind of on the, uh, he's just kind of always on the cutting edge of kind of everything. He's always like looking at just anything that's happening before anybody knows about it. And um, and our manager as well. And so we just, I don't know, man, we, we just like to mess around and we just like to try stuff. If new things come out, it's like, ah, can we do that? Let's try it. And uh, it's, it's just, it's just us having fun. But yeah, we have, we have a, uh, when you buy the coin, you have access, early access to a bunch of, um, a bunch of like live shows, like video, audio, uh, some online hangs and stuff like that. And then also like exclusive merch drops and early access to tickets and merch and all this stuff before it goes to everybody else. So it was just an early bird kind of thing. And yeah, we just thought we'd try this. We'd never really heard of anything before and good or bad. Whether it's a good decision or a bad decision, we really like doing things first. <laughs> well, I think I think it's so cool. I just think, you know, it, like as a fan, just having, you know, kind of special access to things. And so many bands have followed suit, you know, from like Avenged Sevenfold, Kings of Leon. And I think this is something that we're just going to be seeing a lot more of. And uh, I really commend you guys for just you always just kind of forge your own way and done things you know the ways that you wanted to and i think i'm not that, scared to fail yeah <laughs> that's such a Don't good thing in this yeah. life though you know yeah. <laughs> um can you tell me any other things about the album just like are there any collaborations that go on on this album there's some really exciting collaborations i mean we we spent a lot of time with uh i mean right before the pandemic came with paul williams who is just 
it's such a beautiful human being. I mean, wrote Rainbow Connection and wrote so many amazing songs. And just hanging with somebody who just is the way he he speaks, he's so poetic. Everything he says to you is is just it's so deep. And just hanging with him is it was just really inspiring me to write music and write music that said something and that matters to us and and i hope it matters to other people but i mean we really were considerate in in this lyrically and sonically and again making a record that is going to be fun to play live absolutely well i can't wait uh to see you guys you're going to be here uh on march 27th at crypto arena crypto.com arena along with alt j and uh yeah just thank you guys so much for hanging out and can't wait to actually see you in real life that will be nice can't wait to hang (laughs) absolutely so uh john and zach portugal the man thank you so much for hanging today i'm megan holiday it is the world famous k-rock thanks for watching guys